Here's the brief news from the world over this week. DACA is on its way out as President Donald Trump fulfilled a campaign promise. On Tuesday, he rescinded President Barack Obama's program to protect young immigrants from deportation. Known as the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program, it's set to expire in six months. But the president is giving Congress a chance to come up with a more permanent solution. I have a love for these people, and hopefully now Congress will be able to help them and do it properly. And I can tell you, in speaking to members of Congress, they want to be able to do something and do it right. And really, we have no choice. The leadership of the U.S. Catholic Church were among those who immediately and sharply criticized President Trump. The Bishops' Conference denounced the president's decision as reprehensible and a cause of unnecessary fear among immigrant families. Chicago Cardinal Blaise Supich said the decision was nothing short of heartless. Atlanta Archbishop Wilton Gregory called it profoundly regrettable. We will discuss both sides of this issue in our next segment. And Pope Francis is in Colombia for a four-day visit. On the first full day of his voyage on Thursday, the Holy Father urged young Colombians to take the lead in promoting forgiveness and to help their country heal from a bloody 50-year war between the nation's government and rebel guerrilla forces. He said youngsters more than adults are able to leave behind what has hurt us and look to the future without the burden of hatred. The papal visit comes nearly a year after the Colombian government and rebel group FARC finalized a peace deal. Francis is expected to show strong support for that agreement. This is the first papal trip to the country since John Paul's in 1986. And Pope Francis spoke about seeing a psychologist, the role of women in his life, and more in a book-length interview published this week. Pope Francis, Politics and Society is an in-depth interview conducted by a French sociologist. In it, Francis reveals that he sought counseling from a Jewish female psychologist for more than six months in the 1970s. The sessions occurred at the end of his controversial tenure as Jesuit provincial in Argentina. According to Francis, therapy was a great help at the time when he, quote, needed to clarify things. Later in the interview, the Pope speaks of learning to appreciate a female perspective in his life. He mentioned in particular the influence of an Argentinian communist activist who, quote, taught me to think about political reality, end quote. Elsewhere in the interview, the Pope insists that the church must rethink its just war theory. He discusses his opposition to same-sex marriage and laments the reluctance among some Europeans to welcome refugees. And this week marks the 20th anniversary of the death of St. Teresa of Calcutta and the first anniversary of her canonization. The Vatican used the week to honor the beloved modern-day saint. At a commemoration mass on Wednesday in Calcutta, Mother Teresa was declared the patron saint of the archdiocese, where she dedicated her life to serving the poorest of the poor. Meanwhile, in her native country of Kosovo, a cathedral dedicated to St. Mother Teresa was consecrated in the capital city of Pristina. The Cathedral of St. Teresa of Calcutta, once completed, will be the mother church for all of Kosovo. Boy, I can remember those eight hours of live coverage of Mother Teresa's funeral. We did it here at EWTN. It was an amazing event. God bless Mother. Another of the four dubia cardinals has died without answers from Pope Francis. Cardinal Carlo Cafara, retired Archbishop of Bologna, passed away on Wednesday after a long illness. He was 79. Cardinal Cafara, along with Cardinals Walter Brandmuller, Raymond Burke, and the late Joaquin Meisner, who died in July, had asked Pope Francis to clarify parts of his teaching in his exhortation, Amoris Laetitia. The five straightforward questions about church teaching on marriage and Holy Communion is known in church parlance as a dubia. In 1981, Pope John Paul II made Cardinal Cafara the founding president of the Pontifical John Paul II Institute for Studies on Marriage and the Family. In 2006, Pope Benedict elevated him to the cardinalate. Pope Francis personally chose Cafara to take part in the two synods on the family. 
But in the aftermath of Amoris Laetitia, Cardinal Kafara noted the immense confusion it caused among priests as well as much, quote, uncertainty and insecurity in the church that only a blind man could deny, end quote. And on a more personal note, Papal Posse member Father Gerald Murray's own father passed away on September 1st. Gerald E. Murray Sr. was 86 years old. Mr. Murray was a devoted husband to his wife, Mary Jane. They were married for 59 years. He was a Korean War veteran, an attorney, and Mr. Murray had a strong Catholic faith. He served as a Knight of the Order of Malta and a member of the Friendly Sons of St. Patrick of New York. Please keep the Murray family in your prayers and our condolences to Father Jerry. And relics thought to belong to St. Peter have been found in a Roman church. The relics were discovered in Santa Maria Church in Capella in a reliquary box during renovations. They were found in a marble slab below the altar floor. The 11th century church has been undergoing renovations. And clues to the box's contents were found at the church's entrance on an engraved stone plaque. According to the inscription, the reliquary contains the remains of St. Peter, as well as three popes and four martyrs. All the relics were transferred to the Vicariate of Rome. Those attributed to the first pope will be verified by comparing them with the remains in the tomb of St. Peter's Basilica. And speaking of relics, this made my week. A mother in Washington State sent this to me. It's a picture of her son intensely reading Will Wilder II, The Lost Staff of Wonders, over cereal. She said, I must be doing something right if a kid is reading a book before school. My answer is she must be doing something right by encouraging her son to read works that he enjoys. Thank you for that. And before we go to break, I want all of our family and friends in Houston, Lake Charles, all over Florida, the Bahamas, Puerto Rico, and South Carolina to know that you are in our prayers and thoughts as you hunker down to recover or shield yourself from the wrath of these terrible storms. I encourage all of you to remember the families dislocated by and ravaged by Harvey and now Irma. They need your support as they rebuild their lives and their homes. Be safe and know that we're here for you.